Why don't you get back to work? You're such a couch potato. Hey, I can't help it. I am what I am. <laughs> almost everyone has heard of the term couch potato. And almost everyone has used it at one time in their life in reference to themselves or someone they what know. What makes a great couch potato? Well, you get the best taters and the softest couches you can find. And you sit them taters down for six months of game shows, football, and made-for-TV movies. Now, there are very few terms where we know the exact time and place of their origin, but with couch potato, we know exactly. The origin of this term dates back to July 15, 1976, by an individual in Pasadena, California, named Tom Iacino. According to Tom, he had called a friend, but his friend's girlfriend had answered instead, and he asked, is the couch potato there? And his girlfriend looked over at her boyfriend and he was, in fact, sitting on the couch, lazing, watching TV. She lost it. She laughed so hard because it fit so perfectly for her lazy boyfriend who loved to sit on the couch and watch TV a lot. The term quickly became an inside joke amongst them. Tom Iacino claims that he really put no thought behind the funny insult. He just thought it was funny. But linguists have explained that it's actually more clever than at first thought. Tom's friend, Robert Armstrong, a cartoonist, immediately loved the term and asked Tom's permission to turn it into a cartoon. Tom said, sure. Now, both Tom and Robert were actually members of a group called the Boob Tubers. Their purpose, their goal, their life mission, as it were, was to sit in front of the TV and eat junk food. It's truly a noble goal. This is an embodiment of the saying that was inspired by the great philosopher René Descartes. I don't think, therefore I am. <laughs> Welcome everyone after a long hiatus to another video of Wise to the Words. My name is Sean. Everyone has heard of the term Word to the Wise? Well, this channel is called Wise to the Words, where in every video I'll examine an interesting word or a phrase or idiom in the English language and delve into its etymology, its meaning, its origin, and other tidbits and tangents along the way, so you can be wise to the words. In the 1970s, television acquired a very popular nickname. It was called the boob tube. The reason for this term is that televisions back then had cathode ray tubes inside them. These are called CRT televisions. A cathode ray tube is a vacuumized tube with an electron gun inside, and the electron gun shoots a beam of electrons through the tube and onto a phosphorescent screen. So television just naturally got shortened to the tube. And boob in boob tube doesn't refer to breasts, although there is a piece of women's clothing called the boob tube or the tube top, but more along the lines of foolish or a mistake. It is short form for the term booby, which is a stupid or childish person, a term that's been used for centuries. Boob, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, commonly referred to a stupid, inept, or blundering person, a fool. It's possible that it's derived from the Spanish bobo, not bobo the clown, but that does make sense, or from the Latin bulbus, which means stammering, like stammering like a fool. By the 1950s, the term boo-boo became very popular in reference to a mistake, or later on, boo-boo referred to like an ouchie in, in a child. A booby trap was a trap for fools. Only a fool would fall for it. This term was used way back in 1868 in something called the Chambers Journal. Quote, a booby trap, it consisted of books, boots, etc. balanced on the top of a door, which was left ajar so that the first incomer got a shower bath. Now, this is a common gag that we've seen perpetrated over and over on the unwitting, a booby trap. TV became so popular in the 1950s and the 1960s that the term boob tube was coined wow, to reference right it, in but in a negative connotation. There seemed to be so many people who were boobs, fools, who were willing to mindlessly sit in front of the television for hours and hours and even days <laughs> Filling their little minds with a continual procession of, of dumb content. My Lord Raiden, American life has enfeebled his mind. Too much television. And therefore, television became the idiot box or the boob tube. Lights, camera, action! Ah! 
attention, couch potatoes. This summer slate of classic blockbuster movies streamed straight to your boob tube will have you absolutely stuck on your couch. Classics such as Lord of the Fries, Spud Brothers, Starch Trek, Silence of the Yams, and the magical world of Harry Potato. What is particularly clever about the term couch potato is that a potato as a vegetable where the edible part of the plant, the plant that we know and love to eat, is called the tuber. Tubers in the plant world, according to Wikipedia, is an enlarged structures used as storage organs for nutrients in some plants, which the starchy part. Well-known species with stem tubers include the potato and the yam. Potatoes are sometimes simply called tubers. Now, as soon as Robert Armstrong, that cartoonist, heard the term couch potato from his friend Tom Iacino, he immediately saw the connection between boob tube and couch potatoes. In fact, Bob trademarked the term couch potato early on. And in 1979, the term was first used in print in an LA Times article. The couch potatoes who will be lying on couches watching television as they towed toward the parade route, unquote. I don't want no potato. You know my potato give me gas. Mr. Armstrong tried to fight for his trademark rights. Even early on, the term became so widespread, he lost all exclusive right to it. It became a generic slang term. Hollywood, the television capital of the world. It's time to go reeling through the greatest television shows of all time on Couch Potato. The word potato owes its origin actually centuries ago in two types of tubers found in the New World. One was the white potato in Peru, which had fed the Inca Empire for thousands of years. In the 1530s, Spanish explorers found the white potato in Peru. The locals called it tubers, but the Spanish called it papas. Another potato was found in Central America, the sweet potato. The Spanish called it patatas. It is these patatas that Columbus filled his ships with for food for the long voyage home. It doesn't suit you. Sorry, sir. I'm the clever one. You're the potato one. Yes. The word tater was used in print in 1759. The phrase to drop something like a hot potato was used in 1824. And the children's counting game that begins one potato, two potato is Canadian and dates back to 1885. The word couch is from the Latin verb colocare, to lay, to place, to station, to arrange. Broken apart, it's from two words, com, which means with or together, and locare, which means to place. And ultimately from locus, a place. Could he have? <laughs> it is! <laughs> Puppy peed on my sofa! <laughs> sure? Well, what is it then? <laughs> My new sofa, Bobby Pete, on my new sofa! It is from the 14th century that it meant a bed, from the old French couche, a bed or a lair, and from the 15th century, it meant a long bed upon which one rests at full length. Now, Billy, if you spell this correctly, you pass second grade. Couch. C. <laughs> C-O-U-C-H. Correct. I am the smartest man alive! <laughs> and now you know all about the term couch potato. Actually, YouTube itself is a modern boob tube. I guess that would make me an official couch potato. And you a couch potato for watching. But thanks for watching. <laughs> And now you're wise to the words. The couch potato, the complete vegetable, each sold separately, new from Coleco. Plant one next to someone you love. Do buddy do.